So what we're going to look at in this video is we're going to look at how we sketch curves, but not just quadratics. Think back to National 5. In National 5 Mathematics, we looked at how we sketch quadratics and the key bits of information we needed and had to have in order to be able to accurately sketch these diagrams. Well, what we're going to look at here is we're going to look at how we sketch polynomials. So what we're thinking here is anything with a degree 3 or above. So the highest power is x cubed or higher than that, not just a quadratic where it's x squared. Now think back to National 5 when we did quadratics. There were three key bits of information we needed to know in order to be able to accurately sketch it. The first thing we needed was we had to find the y-intercept. We then had to find the x-intercepts. Now this is in brackets because sometimes there were no x-intercepts, sometimes there was one, sometimes there was two. More often than not when we were sketching a quadratic in general, unless it asked us to put it in completed square form, there'd be at least one x-intercept. The final thing we then had to do was find the turning point and determine its nature. Now I said turning point singular because a quadratic had one single turning point. It was either a maximum or a minimum. So the curve for a quadratic either went like that or like that. There was only one turning point here or here where the curve turned back on itself. So we had to find that one turning point and determine if it was a maximum like this or a minimum like that. Now a quick re recap on this, to find the y-intercept, so where it cuts the y-axis, you set x equal to 0 and substitute it into the function. To find the x-intercepts, you set y equal to 0, and that will then give me a quadratic equal to 0, and I solve it to find them. For the turning point, you find the midpoint of the x-intercepts, and then you substitute that value in to get the y part of the coordinate. From that, you're then able to get the turning point and use that to determine its nature. Now sometimes you'd only get one x-intercept and that meant that the curve touched the x-axis so you can imagine it did something like that or if it was a maximum it came up and touched like that. So your y-value for that coordinate would simply be zero. When we were sketching quadratics these three steps are things that we had to follow. Now sketching a polynomial isn't much different. We still have the same general outline of steps there's just a couple of wee tweaks we have to do. The first step of finding the y-intercept that's still the same. So to find the y-intercept, again, we still set x equal to 0. Second step, we want to find the x-intercept. That's exactly the same as well. We set y equal to 0 and we solve it. The only difference here is we may get more than two x-intercepts. And when we set y equal to 0, we'll get a polynomial equal to 0 rather than just a quadratic. So we may have to use synthetic division or algebraic long division to be able to help us factorise this down and get the solutions we're after. The final part was finding the stationary points and determining their nature. Now, I've said stationary points plural because anything with a high de highest degree of 3 or above, so an x cubed, an x to the 4, an x to the 5, is going to have two or more stationary points. Now, finding them is slightly more tricky because for a quadratic, it was the middle of the two x-intercepts. For this, it's not going to be the middle of the x-intercepts. What we have to do is to find it a different way. And to do that, we have to calculate dy by dx. We have to calculate the derivative of the function and set it equal to 0. If we do that, we get the x value of the stationary points. We can then substitute it in to get the y. We can then determine their nature as we did in the previous video looking at stationary points and their nature. Once we've done that, we can tell if they're maximum or minimum, and we can build the sketch up using all these key bits of information. Now, that's a lot to throw at you in one go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate this to you. I'm going to show you how it's done. So imagine I say to you, I want you to sketch y equals 2x cubed minus the x squared. When you see something like that and it's sketched and it's a polynomial, instantly think of the three key steps and three key bits of information you need to be able to sketch that graph. First thing that we said we needed was our y-intercept, so where it cuts the y-axis. To get the y-axis intercept, I set x equal to 0. Substitute that into here, what I can say is y is 2 times 0, 0, take with 3 times 0, which is 0. So I know my y-axis intercept is 0. So that tells me that actually the curve is going to cut the origin at some point. It's going to go through that point. So I know where my y-intercept is from that. Second key bit of information that we wanted was our x-intercept, so where it cuts the x-axis. And in order to get that, I set y equal to 0. 
If I set y equal to zero and substitute in here, I get an equation to solve for that, and I get my x-intercepts. So here, I set 2x cubed to equal 3x squared equal to zero. Now remember, to solve something like this, we look at factorising. This has got a common factor of x squared, so I could say it's x squared bracket 2x minus 3 equal to zero. So from this, I get two x-intercepts. I get x-intercepting at zero, and I know that x equals, so 2x minus 3 is zero, so x is 3 over 2. So that's where it's going to cut the x-axis. So at this point, actually, you could start to build up your sketch. So you could imagine drawing your x-axis and drawing your y-axis. You can mark on some key bits of information. So I know y-intercept is going to be at 0, 0, so is my x. So there's a key point here. What I also know is I've got an x-intercept along here somewhere at 3 over 2. So I've got an x-intercept there when x is 3 over 2. So I've marked on a couple of key bits of information I know. I now need to find the final bit, which was my stationary point, so my turning points of the graph. Now remember, to do that, we set dy by dx equal to 0. So I have to calculate the derivative of this, set it equal to 0, and then solve that. So if y is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared, dy by dx equals, so remember, put the 2 down, it's going to be times, bring the power down, reduce it by 1. So 2 times 3x squared, take away 3 times, and then the same for this. 2 down, and then reduce the power by 1, times 2x. That equals 6x squared, take away 6x. And I know that that equals 0 for my stationary points. So now it's a case of solving it in a similar fashion to this. 6x squared minus 6x, well I know 6x is a factor and I end up getting 6x bracket x minus 1 equals 0. So from this I can say, fine, 6x is 0, x minus 1 is equal to 0, so I know x is equal to 0, and x is equal to 1. From this I can then use these to get my y coordinates. Now I know that x is 0, y is 0, just because of this up here. My y intercept when x is 0 is 0, so I know for y equals 0, x equals 0, y is also equal to 0. Then to get the y coordinate here for when x is equal to 1, I substitute that into my original equation here. So I've got 2 times 1 cubed, so that's 2. Take away 3 times 1 cubed, that's minus 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So I've got two stationary points, one at 0, 0, and one at 1, negative 1. So I know here's a stationary point here, and I've got one down there, at 1, negative 1. Now, it may look fairly obvious that this one here is going to be a maximum turning point. This is a minimum, but we still have to prove it. And we prove it using our table of values like we had before. So you can imagine, again, we draw our table of values with our three columns and three rows. Top row is where we put our x values, so let's do the first one here. So imagine we've x equal to 0, 0 from below, and 0 from above. Then I've got my derivative, f dashed of x, and I've got my graph. When x was 0, derivative was equal to 0, it was stationary, it was flat. When x comes towards 0 from just below, so let's say negative 1, our derivative, so it's 6x squared take away 6. Negative 1 squared is 1, so it's 6, take away 6 times negative 1, so it's 6 minus negative 6, which is 12. So my derivative, at this point, is going to be positive, which means the graph is coming up. If I then look at 0 above, so let's say a half, what I can do is substitute that in here, and I've got 6 times a half squared, so that's 6 over 4, take away 6 times a half, so that's take away 3, 6 over 4 is less than 3, which means that when I take it away, it's going to be negative. So it's going to be a negative value there, which means it goes down. So I know that at 0, 0, I'm going to have a maximum turning point, so I know the graph is going to come up and do that. I then do the same thing here for the next point, the 1, negative 1. So again, set up a new table this time, 1, 1 from below, and 1 from above. So I can do that, use those values to find it, and I can look for my other two columns, which is the derivative and my graph. So if I know x is equal to 1, that's when my stationary point occurs, so my derivative is 0, so it's flat. If I approach 1 from below, so again, let's say a half, well, I'm going to get the same effect as if I was at a half here for the first table. I know it's going to be negative, it's coming down. 
Then imagine I'm at above 1. So let's say 2. 6 times 2 squared, so that's 6 times 4, which is 24. Take away 6 times 2, which is 12. That's going to be positive, which means my graph is going up. So this one here, I know is a minimum turning point. I've got the key bits of information now. I know where it cuts the y-axis. I know where it cuts the x-axis. And I know my turning points. Now it's a case of filling in the gaps. So I know this one's going to shoot off to negative infinity there. It's not going to change again if there's no other turning points. I know that between here and here, the graph's going to come down towards this turning point to go up. It's going to cut through 3, 2, and it's then going to shoot off to infinity that way. That point, make sure you label it so I know why it was 2x cubed, take away 3x squared. So we've sketched the polynomial. Now this seems like a lot of work, but it's vital to do to prove you've got the information and actually you know what you're going on about. So it's vital to prove that you've got the y-intercept. Same vital to prove your x-intercepts, whether they go through it or whether they just touch it like this one here where it's a turning point. What you've also then got to do is find your turning points and show what kind of turning points they are. So find your derivative, solve it and get an x and a y for each of them, then use your table of values to determine their nature. Once you've determined your nature, you can do it. You can never assume that it's going to be a minimum or a maximum. You may have made a calculation error previously and actually, this could have been a wrong point. So I'd have discovered it's not a minimum or a maximum. It's something different. Make sure you do that check at the end. Don't just assume you will lose marks for it. And it won't go down very well.